Todd Munkin's introductory press conference has come and gone, and he proved that he can take the Baltimore Ravens offense to the next level. We talk about the biggest takeaways from Todd Munkin's press conference, dive into wide receiver questions, look at mock drafts, and so much more coming up next here on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another episode of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I am your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, and we're here today on the Locked On Podcast Network, as always, your team every day. And thank you so much for tuning in today, making Locked On Ravens your first listen today. We're free and available on all podcasting platforms, including over in video form on YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. And we're back here after the Todd Monk and press conference. It's a midweek edition episode, which means we're going to be diving into everything that Todd Munkin had to say, big takeaways from the press conferences. He was officially introduced as the Ravens offensive coordinator on Tuesday. And personally, I'd say it went pretty well. John Harbaugh gave a lengthy opening statement about the entire process, how he and Todd Munkin got into contact, which, which is a funny story. We'll talk about that at the top of the first segment. But it, it went, I think it went well. Todd Munkin came off as somebody who obviously knows what he's doing, a very smart football mind, but just has, I think, the pedigree and the mindset that the Ravens wanted in their next offensive coordinator. So with our first two segments, we'll be talking about Todd Munkin again, getting into what he had to say, talking about those takeaways, what it means for the team, what it means for Lamar Jackson, the offense, the coaching staff, and doing a deep dive into Todd Munkin and how, how it aligns to what his previous experience and his previous coaching jobs have been. Then in our final segment, we'll be taking a look at some wide receiver questions, also analyzing some more mock drafts. So jam-packed episode here today. If you are here with us on YouTube, though, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube as we are five days a week. So any Ravens news analysis updates, we are here for you Monday through Friday. So again, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel here. And in audio form, it's the same show, both audio and video form. Big shout out to the video listeners. Big shout out to the audio listeners as well. Anywhere you get your podcasts, you can find us five days a week as well. But let's now talk about Todd Bunkin and what he had to say. So first, I will, I will tell the John Harbaugh story. Now, there was a big conversation point. We had the conversation. I dedicated an episode to it about whether the Ravens should go internal or external. You know, if, if there is somebody who is internal, who they feel comfortable enough, who has the same philosophies, who's been around the team, or if they should just go completely new, take somebody from the outside and start that way. Now, I was a big proponent of an external candidate. Todd Munkin was an external candidate, but John Harbaugh told a funny story about how he and Todd Munkin kind of got into contact. And now he started thinking about Todd Munkin. He said it started with a call he got from his sister, who is married to the former Georgia head basketball coach, Tom Crean, and his sister and Tom Cream got to know Todd Munkin and Todd Munkin's wife. And they got to be friends and spend a lot of time together. And his sister just kept telling John Harbaugh, you know, you got to talk to Todd Munkin. You know, you, you have to. He's amazing. So then John Harbaugh got on the phone with Tom Crean. And Tom Crean talked a lot about Todd Munkin. And that's how the whole situation, I guess, started. So everybody talks about John Harbaugh, the whole, well, he's only going to hire people who are close to him, family type deals. And it turns out, I'm not saying this was completely that. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not trying to put that narrative out there. But it was just kind of funny how. How, oh, this all started where it was a connection that John Harbaugh, and again, the NFL is connections. It's a business. You have connections everywhere. And it's funny how these things work out. So I personally just thought that that was funny in terms of what ended up happening and how this whole thing got sparked and how it got started. But then Todd Munkin takes the podium and we'll get into some of the things that he did say he was asked a lot of questions, a, a lot of different questions. And first he was asked about, obviously he could have stayed at Georgia and for him, what made the Ravens job so appealing and how did it end up blurring him away? And pretty much Todd Munkin said, and he gave a lot of lengthy answers, in-depth answers. I, I was very impressed with just, you know, how much thought he put into every answer. I, I was appreciative of that personally, but pretty much said that, you know, competing as the best of the best at the NFL level was what appealed to him. 
And, you know, also the culture aspect of things talked about at Georgia, how one of the main reasons, you know, he went to Georgia was because of the culture and the head coach and winning and good on defense and all being able to work with an offense and try to make them better on offense. So he thought that it was a pretty parallel fit in terms of what the Ravens do at the NFL level versus what Georgia does and, and kind of what he was about in a job at Georgia. I think a lot of those same things, he kind of said it appealed to him from the Ravens standpoint in the organization and the culture was already set. He said the players are already recruited and the staff was put together already, but he said he can't be two places at once and that it was a great job, but you know, it, it's hard to leave a job like that. But at the same time, you know, he, it really felt like, and feels like one of my big takeaways is that he really does want to be in Baltimore. This wasn't just something where he found an opportunity and was like, Oh, okay. A, a promotion, you know, more money or something like that. He, he really wants to build something in Baltimore and help this Ravens team get back to what we saw on offense. You know, let's say during that 2019 season. And then the, the topic quickly shifted to Lamar Jackson, as I think it should have. There is a lot of uncertainty surrounding Lamar Jackson. And there was a lot of uncertainty throughout the, the process, just about whether an offensive coordinator would take this job because of that uncertainty. And Todd Munkin was asked about if he had a chance to talk with Lamar yet. And the answer to that was no, he actually hasn't talked to any of the players yet. And I know I, some people kind of freaked out about that. I'm not, I'm not putting big stock into that. Like Todd Munkin got, to Baltimore literally like a week ago. I think he said last Wednesday was when he got there. So right now on Wednesday, we're a week since he actually got to Baltimore. He's getting acclimated. And right now, again, there's just so much uncertainty there where, look, I'm not surprised he hasn't talked to any of the players yet even. You know, I, I don't think this is a, oh, he hasn't talked to Lamar, the, the sky is falling type deal. I just think that that is what it is. And then the, there were other questions surrounding Lamar Jackson and just – the system that could be with or without Lamar Jackson. And I was asked about what, you know, Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh told him about the long-term availability of Lamar Jackson. And if that had any impact on Munkin's actual decision-making and first of all, said John Harbaugh and Eric DaCosta said that they were the best in the business, but with any player that's part of a roster, Todd Munkin said, you have interest in what that roster is going to ultimately look like when you get there. But he valued, he, he kind of, put the question, he moved it in a different direction and said that while he wants to have interest in the roster, he wants some place with structure and organization. And again, great on defense. And he said that he talked to a lot of people and those people told him, quote, you want to be a Baltimore Raven. You want to be a part of that organization moving forward. And I think, I think that really made an impact on his decision. So look, while sure, I think <laughs> He would like to coach Lamar Jackson. He talked about the skill set. He was asked about the skill set and ended up saying that the first word that came to his mind was elite. He talked about Lamar Jackson's skill set and elite is what he ended up putting out and talked about how there are narratives surrounding Lamar Jackson. He said that he's underrated as a passer. He kind of got into that a little bit as well. But when asked about what the skill set he would have to work with with Lamar Jackson would be, he said the things he can do with the football, the things that he makes, I think he's underrated as a passer in terms of his ability to make plays and throw it on the field. So you've all seen it. I'm like you. I'm no different than you. I watch what you guys watch. It's pretty amazing. And then he was asked to kind of get into what he meant by Lamar being an underrated passer and talked about that narrative when he came out of college, you know, kind of related to people. Cause I know so many people, so many, not only Ravens fans, but just NFL fans and people who watch Lamar and, and cover Lamar has, they've heard about this narrative about Lamar can't throw Lamar can't pass. And it is just, it was never true to begin with. And it's such an outdated narrative that people continue to try to bring up because they just, it, Lamar's different. He's different. You know, the, the style of play is different. People, it seems like, just can't accept that, that he still can be good. Is he a perfect quarterback? No, nobody is a perfect quarterback. But Todd Munkin, again, talked a little bit about that thing about from the get-go, you know, people saying what he can and can't be. And he's proven that to be a falsehood in terms of what he is capable of. But, you know, it, it's impressive was what Todd Munkin said. He said, but it's impressive. So it does seem like Todd Munkin is excited at the idea of working with Lamar Jackson. Obviously didn't mention he's never worked with Lamar before, but feels like he can do a good job both with or without Lamar. Obviously there's still a lot of uncertainty there, but it didn't feel like it was, oh, well, if Lamar is not there, the offense is sunk. It, it feels like even if Lamar is not there, one of the things that Todd Munkin did talk about 
throughout the entire course of the, the press conference was his adaptability, something we talked about here on the show and talking about personnel, how to adapt that personnel. And that's something that I want to get into in the second segment because I think it's a huge, huge point and something I personally am really excited to see from Todd Monk. And so we still have a ton to talk about here on Locked on Ravens. Do not go anywhere. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And the midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel America's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. And the NBA is coming back on Thursday, or at least the Nuggets are coming back on Thursday. That's my NBA team. They're playing the Cavs. In Cleveland, so I'm going to be looking at that money line, seeing how much it moves or not. And there are so many other exclusive bets that FanDuel has to offer, like the two by three, which is two three pointers scored in the first three minutes. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduelcom lockdown That's fanduelcom lockdown to learn more. Make every moment more of FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. We return here our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostriker, your host. Still here with you on this Wednesday as we continue to dive into takeaways from Todd Munkin's press conference and why it feels like he proved and he showed that he can take this Ravens offense to the next level. And I think a lot of that, again, I, I teased it at the end of the first segment. It, it starts with accountability, but at the same time, adaptability is where I think I'm most intrigued with Todd Munkin and what he can do with this Ravens offense. Now, one thing he did mention is the fact, and John Harbaugh also talked about it a little bit too, is the fact of the no huddle offense. And this is something, you know, the, the tempo, no huddle stuff, that to me is an aspect I've wanted to see the Ravens run more. Greg Roman just did not put Lamar Jackson and the Ravens offense in those situations a ton throughout his tenure. And I, I thought it was a missed opportunity. And I think when we did see it, when the Ravens ran hurry up, when they were no huddle, when they were up tempo, Lamar Jackson thrived in that, and Todd Munkin talked about the ability to keep a defense uh, on their toes and not letting them relax, and, and that's something that I do believe that with how dominant this Ravens run game is, with how a lot of people are hoping, myself included, the pass offense is able to pick it up and get a lot better under Todd Munkin. If you're consistently picking up chunk plays, keeping the same defensive package on the field, and letting Lamar kind of take control of the offense a little bit in a no-huddle type of environment, I think that can be deadly for the Ravens offense. And I, I still, I'm a, I'm a little upset we didn't see it enough in the Greg Roman era, but hopefully, and, and Todd Munkin did talk about it. Hopefully we'll see it a little bit more here. But then he he talked a little bit, you know, he was asked about some of the personnel that the Ravens have, talked about some of the tight ends like Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, and was asked about Isaiah Likely specifically and how that he can help take his game to the next level. And Todd Munkin kind of talked about how, you know, the two tight ends he had at Georgia were two of their best players, and that didn't make a lot of the slot receivers there happy, but it is just the way that it works, he said. And, you know, for if you're in 11 personnel, the tight ends are mad. If you're in 21 personnel, you know, others get mad. It's just everybody wants the ball, and that's kind of what he was saying. Everybody wants to play, but... You know, he says he looks at the Ravens roster. You see Mark Andrews and what he's done for so many years and actually told a story about how he went out and, and saw in 2011 Mark Andrews catching passes from Kyle Allen. But it's a matter of these guys being able to make plays on the field, run after the catch and create matchup issues, which is a great starting point for them. But it feels like as Todd Monkin gets settled in more, he'll be able to identify and understand the personnel that he has at his disposal. I'm sure he has an idea of it now. I'm not saying he's coming in completely blind. When he was talking, it seemed like he had an idea of what he wanted to do. But, you know, for what he wants to do, he talked about his offensive philosophy a little bit. He was asked about that. And he said, quote, to me, balance isn't the run pass ratio. To me, balance is make them defend all five of your guys. And so pretty much all the threats, all, all the explosive players you have on your field, make them defend everybody. And again, it comes back to keeping the defense on their toes. And so for so many people for so many years under the Greg Roman offense who wanted wide receivers to be able to thrive a little bit more, it felt like the, the offense was just through running backs and tight ends. And that's really most of what defense needed to focus in on. Not all, not all, but it felt like it was most. And it felt like wide receivers weren't getting utilized to their full potential. Under Todd Monk, and we've seen, we've talked about the success that he's had with Mike Evans and Odell Beckham and even guys like Jarvis Landry. 
you're able to make defenses be, well, we got to put resources over here. We got to spread out over here because the Ravens, let's just say the Ravens have Rashad Bateman and another guy on, on the left side of the field. They have Devin Duvernay and let's say Mark Andrews on the right side of the field. So you got to spread guys out. Plus you have the run game you got to worry about as well. You can still use heavy packages if you want to. I, I think that Todd Munkin is is the, the guy for this. And I'm, I'm I the, the press conference was just impressive to me overall. And you're able to work with enough of a personnel group with many personnel groupings throughout a career that Todd Munkin has had both offensive coordinator experience in the NFL and in college and all of that. He has an idea of what to work with. And he also talked about the fact that he, he was asked about Stenson Bennett, who said that he didn't really understand football until he got to work with Todd Munkin. And, you know, Stenson Bennett credited Todd Munkin with, he said all the credit to Todd Munkin. And he said, first of all, Todd Munkin said that was way too much. You know, he said that Stenson was in front of the camera and he had to say that, you know, as he said, let's get real. He was having fun out there too. Todd Munkin, he, he feels like a very lighthearted guy was joking around and telling stories, but also feels like he can hold the, his players accountable. He can get the best out of his players. But he did, you know, he praised Stenson Bennett a lot, said he's very smart, understands football. He said, he said he just didn't understand certain things. And I think, again, that's something too, where, the Ravens players, they understand the game. The Ravens have a smart football team full of players that understand how to play the game of football. But it's a matter of working with them in the areas that maybe they're a bit unsure of to fully unlock that potential. And so for the Ravens offense, I think that's a great, great thing to have. It's just a teacher who can be related to in multiple different ways. I think Todd Munkin can bring that to the field. And then in, in terms of actual personnel groupings, he, he talked a bit about, you know, how you just have to have everything fall into place where you have to get the analytical part down. He said, and he, he said, how do we get the model? Don't turn it over. And how are we explosive? That's what he said. He was very big on being explosive, wanting to score and just, and just wanting to win. Todd Munkin has a winning mentality. It, it came off throughout the entire press conference. To me, it feels like winning above all for Todd Munkin. And, and that's something the Ravens are about too. you know, it's play like a Raven embody a Raven and win you know, win both on and off the field. And Todd Munkin feels like he's going to be a great fit for what the team wants to do on the field, but off of it in the meeting room, being able to be a, a quality positive presence in the organization. It feels like he has that. Plus he's, he's, he's super smart too, but also, people thought this was a shot at Greg Roman. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I'm sure it was not intentional. Don't get me wrong. Todd Munkin, I don't think would do that, but I don't care if it's with a fullback without a fullback four wide, three wide, you know, and talked about how you can't just make stuff up. You know, it's fun to do those types of things, but you can't just make stuff up. And the principles of how you win are the same. And then talked a bit about also during a stents and men and answer, you have to see through the player's eyes first is what he talked about. And being able to not force someone to do something they're not capable of is big here. So he said, and this is where people said, oh, Greg Roman, Greg Roman. He said, you can't take a fullback and say, hey, we want you to be a matchup guy on a linebacker, things like that. You just have to work through. And everybody looked at the videos of Patrick Ricard lining up in the slot against the linebacker and being like, hmm. Mm, where have we seen where have we seen that before and again no it's, it was obviously no shot to patch a record I, and this to me even emphasizes that you can use a fullback in a time monk offense you can go four wide in a time monk offense you can pound the rock in a time monk offense you can air the ball out obviously again time monk's background definitely more of a pass first guy he likes to throw the football it's very well documented he's talked about the short passing game being an extension of the run game, but throughout this press conference, I think he showed that we don't, we, we don't really know what he's going to do with the offensive personnel and the offensive playbook and how the offense is going to look. We have an idea, but I think that's a good thing where we can just kind of guess right now. And it's only one weekend, right? It's not like he's going to have the entire offensive game plan formulated in a week. It's, it's just not going to happen that way. Plus he talked about the offensive coaching staff and said, you know, it, it was a work in progress, obviously for what Baltimore has right now. I know Jess Rebeck put out there that maybe the Browns would have interest in a guy like James Urban, who's friends with Kevin Stefanski and has been with the Ravens for many, many years. So th these coaches, these coaching careers, you usually don't last too long in one place, regardless of where you go. Some, some coaches, it works out that way. And that's great. You have a great relationship with the organization and that's great. But, you know, we've seen T Martin be interviewed for the offensive coordinator job for Indianapolis. He ends up getting passed up for a different candidate, but with Todd Munkin, just like we saw with Mike McDonald in 2022, 
he's probably going to want to bring some guys over, whether it's from Georgia, Georgia, from his NFL days, like Mike McDonald bringing in Ryan Osborne, who was a defensive assistant. He's now the defensive coordinator over in Charlotte with the Charlotte 49ers at the college level. You also have David Ajabo. You know, that was a pick where David Ajabo and Mike McDonald, even Ryan Osborne, you know, those three worked really well together at Michigan. So <laughs> is Denson Bennett a sixth round pick of the Ravens in 2023? I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do there, but overall, my takeaways from what Todd Munkin had to say at his press conference again, I was I was very impressed. And I, the last thing I'll say, he had a, he had a lot of praise for Odo Beckham. He he talked a lot about Odo Beckham because obviously during his one year as the Cleveland offensive coordinator, he worked over there with Odo Beckham and Jarvis Landry, both guys who had a thousand yards receiving, and that's something again he had a thousand yards in every year he had. One guy, at least one guy with a thousand yards, but talked about Odell. And he first asked, you know, he doesn't even know the rules. Can he speak on it? And obviously Odell's a free agent. So he said, oh yeah, okay, I can. And you can't speak on a guy who's under contract, but called o Odell super athletic and twitchy, really likes football. And he really liked him. And obviously it didn't work out the year that he was there with him in Cleveland, but he, he wants the ball. And he said, I don't know why everybody gets so mad about people wanting the ball. You know, he said, I, I don't know where I've been, where a great player didn't want the ball. You know, and he, he compared it to basketball. He didn't know where a basketball player didn't want shots or a baseball player didn't want at bats. They want opportunities to showcase their ability. And he said he thinks it's awesome. He's tremendously skilled. He likes his personality, he likes to compete, and said he likes the work ethic and just said tremendous at the end. And so it sparked everybody. I'm probably going to be talking about it here throughout the rest of the week about Odell to Baltimore. Again, it sparked a lot of Odell rumors to Baltimore. We'll see what happens. But overall, what I will say for my takeaways, I'll get back to that now. I think what Todd Munkin showed to me is the fact that he wants to score and he wants to win. He chose the Ravens because of the organization and, and competing in the NFL at that NFL level. He's adaptable regardless of the personnel he, he's given and is able to put together. He's a lighthearted guy, but he can also get the best out of his players. And above all, he does want to be in Baltimore. And I think that with or without Lamar Jackson, he, he can put together an offense that is competitive. Now, obviously with Lamar Jackson, I think your offense is going to be much more competitive, but for me, I think this is a guy that can really take this Ravens offense to the next level and, and shared a lot about what his philosophies are and his styles are that I think so many people wanted out of the Greg Roman era in Baltimore, out of Lamar Jackson's rookie contract era in Baltimore. So we will see what happens. But for now, I think Todd Munkin showed that, that he can be a guy that helps this Ravens offense out a ton moving forward but coming up in our final segment we'll be diving into a question about wide receivers for the ravens we'll look at a couple more mock drafts here so a ton to still dive into here on lockdown ravens we return here our final segment of locked on ravens kevin ostriker still here with you on wednesday again thank you so much for tuning in with us being here and making us your first listen of the day on locked on ravens be sure to again if you're on youtube with us today like the video subscribe to the channel daily ravens content five days a week also in audio form same show day the ravens content Five days per week. Be sure to follow along anywhere you get your audio podcast. But let's now look at a mailbag question here from Alex Raven, who says, which wide receivers do you think he will want to keep on the current roster and who would he want to go after? And so this is obviously in relation to Todd Munkin here and which wide receivers he would want. Now, I think I think Todd Munkin can work with a plethora of wide receivers. I will go back to what I said at the end of the second segment and say maybe the Odell Beckham Jr. to, to Baltimore train is back on and maybe – you look at a player in Odell who obviously when he is at his peak, when he is at full health, is a star, unquestioned number one guy at his peak. And I know a lot of people are wondering, can he get back there after the injuries? Is he someone who can be the Odell Beckham that we saw for those years with the Giants and some of those Cleveland days too? And he helped out the Rams a lot during their Super Bowl win and what he was able to do there. I think that'd be a player that maybe Todd Munkin wants to get in a Ravens uniform and just say, hey, this is a proven guy. And the, the key here is Odell's not going to break the bank. He, he's going to get, I'd say, somewhat of a decently sized contract. I'd say maybe a one or two year prove it deal. But he's not going to be a five year, $80 million guy, a three year, $50 million guy. That's not what it's going to be. You can probably work out something with Odell. And especially if the relationship is already good with Todd Munkin and Odell. And we'll talk about this again tomorrow and on Friday and, and throughout the rest of the week. But if that relationship's already good, Maybe Odell says, hey, I want to be in a situation that's good for me. You know, Todd Munkin and I work great together. Let's see what it is. And there, there are opportunities for the Ravens in this offense to get snaps and to get catches and to get targets, especially now that Roman is gone. And I think Munkin is going to utilize the receivers a little better. 
I think that's someone who Monken might want on the roster. In terms of guys already on the roster, you know, the Ravens, John Harbaugh, Eric Acosta talked a lot about just looking at the wide receiver room and figuring it out. In terms of guys who I think will still be on the roster, I think I think Rashad Bateman and Devin Duvernay are safe, and then everybody else is kind of a is kind of a question mark at this point. Unless I'm forgetting anyone, I don't think I am. I mean, Demarcus Robinson is someone who has a good. I think if he can come back, if the Ravens want him back as like a fifth guy, I don't think obviously he's not going to be. You don't want him to be a number one, but he's a solid depth option. I think he he likes being in Baltimore. I would not be mad at Demarcus Robinson if he was able to come back there. But those three guys, I'd say, Demarcus Robinson, like a 50-50, Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay, 100%, I think they're going to be back. That's not it's not a question for me. But then you look at the other wide receivers on the roster, I training camp is going to be big for some of these guys. But I think, you know, for Tylen Wallace, that could be – this could be his last training camp. James Prochet, this could be his last training camp. So I just – I don't know – for what the Ravens have right now, how many guys they're going to be able to bring back or even just want to bring back. They have some practice squad options like Shamar Bridges, Andy Isabella. But again, I for guys like James Prochet, Sammy Watkins, I don't think is going to be back, obviously. I think for me, only Rashad Bateman and Devin DuVernay are safe for me. And then maybe Demarcus Robinson is like a 50-50. Yeah, he'd be a nice number five. So where does that leave you? It leaves you, I think, with if you have six wideouts on the roster, which is usually the number I go with, Bateman and Duvernay are one, two. Let's just throw to Marcus Robinson in there for three. I think what you can do now, if you're the Ravens, is you can still trade for a pure number one guy, aka DeAndre Hopkins or Mike Evans or Chris Godwin, or maybe if Keenan Allen's a cap casualty, you can go out there and get him. Odell Beckham can be an option you bring in, but you can sign two. I think my path would be six wide receivers for me would be Bateman and Duvernay with, let's just say Robinson is your fifth or sixth. You're able to go out there and sign an Odell and trade for a number one guy and then draft a wide receiver in the middle rounds, or you sign one veteran and you draft two wide receivers. So I think you're, you're keeping three guys from last year's roster and you're adding three new guys. Now, maybe if Tyler Wallace has the training camp and preseason of his life, if James Prochet has the training camp and preseason of his life, you can keep those guys. Maybe the Ravens keep one of those as opposed to, so in, instead of having three guys coming in new, you have two guys coming in new and then four guys on the roster. But I think Todd Monk is going to really want to take a look at that room, just like John Harbaugh and Eric DeCasa said, and see what see what is there for them. But for me, if you can get a guy like Jackson Smith and Jigba and sign Odell, I think that's successful. If you can trade for DeAndre Hopkins and add a guy like Hakeem Jarrett, I think that's successful too. So we'll see what ends up happening there. Now let's get into one or two mock drafts before we get out of here today on Locked On Ravens. And again, we had over 70 mock drafts, really, really – I'm I'm really happy with how much engagement we got on this, but let's first start off here with one from Herbert Blackwell Jr., who has a Lamar Jackson trade, and we'll start off again. The Lamar Jackson trades are big here. He has the Ravens trading Lamar to the Texans and a seventh rounder in 2025 for the second overall pick, the 12th overall pick, the 65th overall pick, which is a third rounder, first in 2024. Uh, another first in 2024 and a fourth rounder in 2024. And then on top of that, oh, oh, wow. All right. We have a Mark Andrews trade. We have the Ravens trading Mark Andrews to the Seahawks for DK Metcalf, a fifth rounder, number 153, and a fourth rounder in 2024. Hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'd do that trade personally, but it adds to the, to the craziness of this one. So if the second pick, the Ravens take actually Will Anderson Jr., the edge from Alabama. Then at number 12, Anthony Richardson, the quarterback out of Florida, was the selection. Then 22, Jordan Addison, the USC wide receivers, the pick. Deontay Banks, the Maryland corners, the pick at 65. Jalen Moreno Cropper, the Fresno State wide receiver, is the pick at 86. Then you have Tyler Scott, the Cincinnati wide receiver, at 125. Darrell Najami, the Maryland edge, is at 153. Trading the third, the Florida safety, is at 159. And then Luke Schoonmaker, the Michigan tight end, is at 200. So for me, Will Anderson, <laughs> Uh, Will Anderson's a talented guy. The edge position is one that Baltimore has at Afe Owe, and they have David Ajabo and Tyus Bowser there. Will Anderson to make that group scary. Will Anderson has the potential to be the best player in this draft, hands down. He he uh, could go number one overall if the Bears decide to keep Justin Fields or keep that pick, but Will Anderson is a beast on that field. Then you have Anthony Richardson and Jordan Addison. I think those are solid. I know Richardson 
Some people are very in on Anthony Richardson. Some people are very out on Anthony Richardson. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of Anthony Richardson. Jordan Addison is one of my favorite wide receivers in this class. Then you get the corner at 65 and Deontay Banks. Two more wide receivers. I'm I'm only taking two max if I'm the Ravens. I'm not taking three guys. So maybe instead of Tyler Scott, you take a corner in that situation. You have another edge pick, a safety, and also a tight end there. So this this one's crazy. This one is a wild mock draft from Herbert. I, I like the overall thing. I like it overall. Still wouldn't make that Mark Andrews trade if, if I were the Ravens personally, unless they were very confident that Le- Isaiah Likely and Charlie Kohler, and maybe they bring in somebody else who can step into that role. But I think hopefully it, this is kind of like a starting new on offense where you're trading Lamar and you're trading Mark Andrews away and just saying, hey, we're we're just going and we're starting everything new on this one. But let's finally get into a mock draft from Cam here who takes Zay Flowers, the wide receiver from Boston College, at number 22. Clark Phillips, the third corner from Utah at 86, Andrew Voorhees, the USC guard at 125, Henry Toto, the Alabama linebacker at 159, and Muhammad Ibrahim, the Minnesota running back at 200. My first three picks from my mock draft Sunday are these first three picks, so I'm on board with every single one of those. We'll accept the fact that it was Jackson Smith and Jigbins that is a Flowers. I'm, I'm a big Zay Flowers guy. I think there are those Jordan Addison's, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zay Flowers with 22, who I'd be super happy with the Ravens were able to get. Clark Phillips, I don't think it's falling anywhere near 86, but if the mock draft simulator gives it to you, you take it. Voorhees is someone who's a veteran and, and can maybe slot in, have a competition with Ben Powers there at left guard. And then you have a linebacker and a running back at 159 and 200. This is solid. I think a very solid overall Mac draft here from Cam. But that's all I have for you here today on Locked on Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let me get back here tomorrow. It's more Todd Munkin talk and more Ravens talk here on Locked on Ravens. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And I will see you right back here tomorrow.